Well, I'm back at the truck stop where I was uh, last week before I went to get the shims and the weather just doesn't want to turn to spring. Uh, the day before yesterday was fine, but I woke, I was checking on my truck, you know, once in a while and I see, I see at night it started snowing and I called my, my friend who's a freight broker here. I said, I demand an explanation. Why Alberta, why is Alberta refusing to switch to spring? And he says, oh, that's nothing. It was minus nine in the morning. Celsius, he says, oh, that's nothing. They promise uh, 10 centimeters of snow, four inches overnight, and it's gonna be still cold. <laughs> but I wanted to, uh... so yeah, I spent three days and nights at the hotel after I uh, got those shims made. And I was looking for a load Friday, you know, Saturday, there's hardly any postings. And it was, uh, I got lots of food, but it ended on Sunday. So even Saturday, I went to a burger place uh, next to the hotel. And uh, the drive-through is open. Yeah, but I, I called them on the phone. I, I got the phone number from Google Maps. I called them on the phone. And I said, I cannot go through the drive through in my truck and I don't have a car. Like, how can I order a burger? And she says, oh, just, it's fine. We can make it for you and you can pick it up there. And so I ordered the Papa Burger, which is kind of like double, double, uh, double, kind of like a, what do you call it? Basically has two patties of meat, you know, they're pretty good. It's this A&W burger place. They, they used to exist in US a long time ago. Now you only see them in Canada. I like their burgers in some, in some places. Like I was in uh, somewhere east of here, but also in Alberta, they even had bison meat, bison, you know, like real bison. It's so much better than, you know, beef. So I had, I did that a couple of times. And I was staying in my room, when I checked in, I made sure I sanitized everything, you know, clean everything with warm water and soap. And I had the sanitizer cleaner, you know, for bathrooms. And this liquid soap, I still have another one, so over here. Yeah, and I got, uh, I got some vitamin D, taking that together with B1 and went for a walk well went for a walk a couple of times did some some exercises with my uh, bubble thing blin in Russian and uh, and my kettlebell and I think I forgot to uh, to lock the side door the comp the compartment door because uh, I woke up I woke up today and I thought okay shall I stay a couple of more nights and I went to the truck there was like two guys sitting in pickup trucks I'm always suspicious about you know when I see a pickup truck sitting there and just watching you know like one guy was ahead kind of like on the lookout and the other guy was in the back parked right behind me you know and then when they saw me two minutes later they left both at the same time and I started driving today, I had to go back to the welding shop and I see my my right uh, door is fl flapping, you know, in the wind. And they could have easily got inside the truck through that, you know. I maybe just broke the, the window on the, on the other side there, away from people, but anyway. So yeah, so I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to stay longer at the hotel, but uh, because I ordered the gloves and masks in case I go into US. I don't want to go without a mask. And the place where I ordered them, uh, I got like a bunch of gloves, you know, those disposable gloves. Uh, it was like 150 bucks Canadian, about 110 US for probably like 100 pairs of gloves and about 50 masks. Not the fancy one, that N93, but the one that's somewhere in between surgical and this one. But these guys, they're not open on the weekend. What kind of an online business is that, you know? And they closed at 3 
on Friday, which I did not realize was the fact. And so I placed the order at like seven on Friday. And I keep checking on the status and I keep saying pending, pending, pending. I'll check this out. The guy with the tandem Jeep. That looks like a Aspen or Trail King. And all a lot of local guys, they have uh, ramps in the back, you know, because they do so much like this daily moves, you know, like local moves. So they don't want to bother with disconnecting the uh, the neck all the time. So they load everything from the back. And the drawback to that is that the deck, the deck of your trailer becomes shorter, right? Because you're taking the space, you have to put the wheels, you have to push the wheels forward, right? For this. Uh, so anyway, I keep checking and it says uh, status pending. And uh, finally, I call them today and they're in Toronto, actually. And uh, I call them today at nine o'clock their time, seven here. I said, guys, what's going on? Why is it still pending? And she says, well, we came in and there's uh, over the weekend, there was 1000 orders placed. She did not say what for because they're like a dental supply company. So they ship all kinds of stuff. But I assume a lot of that was for uh, personal protection equipment, right? And she says, basically, there's a thousand orders ahead of me. And I said, can you use uh, UPS Air instead of UPS Ground? She says, no, only UPS Ground. And she says, we can get to you. We'll probably get to your order uh, by the end of today or tomorrow. And then it'll take maybe, you know, a couple of hours to get it ready and then shipped. So I said, if I wait here, when am I going to see it? And she says, well, either end of this week, Friday or beginning of next week. And I said, no, I'm sorry, I cannot wait that long. Please cancel, cancel the order. So they canceled the order. So I called the hotel guy. I said, yeah, I thought I would be staying two more days, but I said, it's just crazy. I don't want to wait here for these masks and gloves for another week. And so I got, I, and uh, so I went to my truck and that's where I saw those guys in pickup trucks over there. And the reason why I had to go back to uh, Excel welding because on Saturday, I got a text from the Josh, from the guy who did the welding, and he said he made a mistake. So basically what he gave me, he gave me them like this, right? So here he had the knot, but this side was just like a washer. It was just like a washer welded. Like it's, I should have taken a picture. Basically there was no way to grab, put a wrench in here. And of course these are self-locking knots. They're pretty tight. And once I, you see what's happening, like I try to tighten and this thing turns, right? And so before there was nothing to grab onto here. It was just a flat, flat head with no, you know, nothing for a wrench or even a screwdriver. And I test him, I said, hey, I wanted to, I want you to weld the nut. And that's, of course, that's what, that's what they did, right? They just welded the nut with some, uh, TIG welder, so now it's like a real bolt, so I can use, uh, I can use uh, two wrenches to tighten this, right? And I wanted to do, um, because they have a ceiling crane, I thought I would ask him to restack my uh, stinger, but this guy Josh texted me again this morning, he says, oh, I don't feel very well, I'm not coming to work. Okay, I hope it's nothing serious. And so, you know, and plus it's cold. I said, that's it. I'm not gonna do this restacking thing. I'm just gonna go and uh, find a place to park and see if I can if I can find a load. So I just drove there in my truck with the trailer and uh, they didn't charge me anything. I just gave him like a tip, five bucks. I said, please give it to Josh, you know? And the guy took the guy, I don't know, 10 minutes to uh, first he did like, did like a spot thing just to make sure the the nut stayed in place on these four bolts. And then he did, a, you know, once the nuts were secure, then he did a full round weld on each of them. So now it's like a homemade bolt, you know? And I got four of those. So why there's two in case you're wondering. So one will be attached to the bracket on the trailer right that will hold the the shim in place 
and the one on the top, the second bolt will 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 hold the shims if I use more than one. Basically, it'll hold the stack, and of course that's why it's important so I can uh, tighten them, right? Otherwise, they'll be like flapping, you know. Uh, well, not under a load. If I have a load, they're not gonna flap. There's a lot of weight in there, but just in case, maybe you jump somewhere in the pothole, you know. And uh, and so yeah, the, the good news here is that uh, uh, price of diesel keeps going down. I think Friday I uh, I um, I found fuel at dollar eight Canadian per liter, and today the small gas station next to my hotel. I looked at the price, it says 93.9, so 93.9 Canadian per liter. And so I went like this, there was no cars in there, so I, I was able to pull in right with my trailer and I kept the rear booster locked, locked up so I can back out of there. And I got about 215 liters for $200 Canadian. And that's it, so now I have plenty of fuel I have a jug of water, I have my soap, I got my, uh, I got my shake, so I can make this protein shake, and I just got, I just got a burger, so now it's lunch time, and after that I'm gonna basically sit in the truck, stay away from people, and uh, use my Bell Mobility internet, that's the only problem here they don't have any Wi-Fi like at the hotel I had free Wi-Fi so here there's nothing free uh, except inside I still see they sell coffee and so there should be hot water if I want to go for tea later because the other place where I was there yeah that shell before I went in you know, with my big mug I like this one I don't know it's like a gallon of water in here overpriced mug I went in there and I got some hot water and, and then on Sunday I went in and she says no no hot water I say why and she said well we uh, we don't serve tea or coffee anymore everything is shut down because of the coronavirus she says all oh, the only drinks you can buy are those in the fridge and but but again today so that was the difference I saw basically some places stopped selling you know liquid drinks but I passed the Starbucks when I was coming here and uh, I see this cars around and Starbucks is open for you know drive-through only but I didn't want to go there I'm trying to limit how much coffee I drink so I try to stick you know try to drink more tea and and what's funny one thing I noticed is that you know human beings were such such social animals and what's funny is that people go to the drive-thru and they buy food and they, they don't want to go right back home you know I see two three four cars are sitting right there and they're eating food inside their cars and pickup trucks but right next to the burger place they don't talk you know but there's still people find some kind of comfort when there's other people nearby and the same thing with the Starbucks I, I noticed that yesterday and today I went through and there's like six or seven cars in parking lots you know after they go through drive through then they park and they have their coffee and they watch other people and maybe they listen to music and they talk to themselves if there's like more than one person of course inside the car but nobody's talking to each other all the windows are closed it's just people still prefer to hang out over there even though you cannot go inside, there's no sitting area anymore, right? So weird, you know? Oh, and before I came here, I was afraid that they might close the, um, uh, you know, the washrooms and convenience store. Then I thought I would just go back to the same hotel where I parked and just park in front of the hotel. But I called the phone number and some lady answers and I said, and she's some different company name. I said, hey, I'm just trying to reach the the truck stop and, and I said do you know if, if they're still open like is the washrooms open or convenience store and she says yeah the convenience store is open and there's uh, Tim Hortons and the other small building over there where probably I can get hot water if I decide so but so yeah and I was able to go go in everything is open except you cannot sit down the sitting area is blocked 
I'm gonna get my burger. So now it's time for a lunch and hopefully today or tomorrow I'll I'll find some kind of a load. Uh, a friend of mine from Landstar uh, did a load to Yukon. Yukon, which is like very north of Canada. And that's when this thing accelerated and and businesses started shutting down. He got so afraid he doesn't want to go into US and he's from Lancaster, right? So he's driving back 3,000 miles from Yukon back to Toronto area. And I said, you're crazy. He says, no, I don't want to go into US. Uh, we had some uh, reports. A couple of Lancaster drivers got sick. Uh, one went to, uh, I forgot where, but somewhere in the States. And when he came back to Canada, he had symptoms. So this guy, is, he's like one year younger than me. He's like 57. He's scared. He doesn't want to go. And I said, that's, I, I'm scared too, but that's why I wanted to get these gloves and masks. You know, now it takes them forever. Screw this. So we're going to do it ninja style with my t-shirt. I got plenty of t-shirts and I just need to, to find some, a place where to, to wash my clothes because, you know, I got like last pair of pants, uh, but I got plenty of t-shirts plenty of socks all I need is pants so you know if I see a Walmart somewhere that I'm just gonna go go gonna go in and buy a bunch of those uh, five dollar a pair there's like a gym pants you know five bucks Canadian so you cannot beat that deal I'll buy 20 you know and just wear them and then throw them out <laughs> all right boys and girls stay safe be cool don't take any bad nickels see ya